My name is Luke Brimcombe and I'm originally from England and I moved to Australia and since then I've been travelling all over Australia. Conservation biology, at the moment I'm studying with Wollongong University and I've also studied with Brisbane and Cairns. So it began when I was studying conservation biology. So in conservation biology we're taught how to conserve species in the wild and we're also taught what kind of biological features they have and what that would require them to eat and it made me look at my own biological features and what my biological features required me to eat. The transition was very slow. I started off going into looking at the ingredients of what I was eating, started off with looking at e-numbers and chemicals which they put in the food to enhance taste and I would look at those chemicals and how they would relate to my own health. And then from then, it kind of just transitioned to looking in depth of all of the food that I would eat. It's the biggest challenge when you go into a supermarket. Everything is in a packet. I'd say 98% of things that are in packets have or contain a dairy product. So I almost have to just discard packets in general and just go straight to raw forms because then I know what's in them. So I end up going to bulk food places, uh, fruit and vegetable shop, and they always have really good prices on discount items. The health got worse at first because as I began to cut foods out of my diet, I would supplement them with other things which would give me that same burst of salt, sugar and fats. For instance, I would take out cheese and dairy and instead I would increase my fried foods and chuck salt and sugar on them and I would increase my dessert intake. I was getting less, less healthy. So even though I'd made the transition, it was a very slow transition. Definitely more difficult. I definitely agree that going to a healthy lifestyle at first becomes extremely financially difficult but in the long run I believe that when I'm in my 50s and 60s the people who were paying for the two dollar cheeseburgers and the dollar fries rather than going and getting a three dollar kilo worth of potatoes going home and frying them up themselves those people will be paying more in medical bills in their later lives than I will be. I'll be recuperating my costs later on in life. So I see it as, although I'm spending more money now, and it's hard for me now, in the long run, I'll be better off. I pretty much have my staples that are really easy to make, so hummus is number one, sushi is number two, a curry is stir fry and then just munching on fruit and then I'd take that and I'd just twist it with different ways of making different insides for the sushi, make, making different stir fries and curries and then having different varieties of fruit as they came into season. If I shop seasonally and I eat seasonally it tends to reduce the cost as well. It's definitely hard to find a good treat these days. These days I'm making all my own treats. I end up making I'd say four or five desserts each weekend that last me the whole week and I'll just nibble at them in the freezer. And I believe that variety is key. The further we put ourselves back into nature and relate ourselves back with the animal kingdom and back with nature, the better off the earth will be. It saddens me to think that people need to, or not need to, but don't think about going to other alternatives which, which do not fund harm and I just, I just see all animals as equal and I think that our own predeterminations of which animal should be eaten and which animal should be petted and kept as a pet and loved are set by people who are making money and when you look at someone like a child who has no determined values and you give them an apple and a bunny rabbit, 
they're going to eat the apple and pet the bunny rabbit. And that is because their values are of human values and not of monetary values because they do not know of money yet.